couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lincoln Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to the second of the three video lesson mini-series about harmonics. In the first video lesson, we learned about the natural harmonics, the ones on 12, 7, and 5, right? also on 9 and 4, but let's forget about these for a moment. Um, and I showed you how to take them and form your own melodies to outline scales, pentatonic scales, and also chord outlines, and uh, how to really get the most out of natural harmonics. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the basics of artificial harmonics um, with the fingers and also with a pick. Quite unusual for Lick and Riff, but I want to show you how to do them with a pick as well. Um, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to apply artificial harmonics and play a really, really, really cool guitar effect that uh, drops jaws when played correctly. It's called the waterfall effect, or cascading harmonics, or harp harmonics. I'm pretty sure there are even more names. Uh, there's no official name for that effect. And um, to do that, you need to know how to play artificial harmonics. So uh, let's forget about the harmonics on 7 and 5, and concentrate on the octave, the one on 12. The natural harmonics are called natural harmonics because of open strings. You don't apply your fingers on any fret, so they're called the natural harmonics. Of course, any harmonic is a natural harmonic, but on guitar it's called an artificial harmonic when you actually put a finger on a fret and play a harmonic of that. For example, I'm playing F sharp, and if I want to play a harmonic of that note, I need to count to 12 from that note. My finger is on the second fret, so 2 plus 12, 14. So the harmonic is on 14, and that's why it's called an artificial harmonic. Now, that's just a technical name. This is a legit harmonic. As long as it's a harmonic, it's natural, okay? But the difference is whether you're putting your fingers on the fretboard or not. That's the whole thing. So, um, how do you do that? Put a finger anywhere on the fretboard. Let's say third string, fourth fret, okay? So, um, you take your finger, your forefinger, and you put it above the steel fret, 12 frets above the note, okay? So you can get the true sound of the harmonic. Anywhere else, if you put it above the wooden part, you won't get a sound. It'll be an almost harmonic, but to get a clean harmonic, you'd, you have to be exactly above the steel fret. Just touch the string lightly, okay? If this is the string, you don't press it, you just touch it, okay? Just cover it with your finger, don't press it, don't apply any force. And use either your thumb, your pinky, or your third fingers to play that note. The thumb, the third finger, or the pinky. Now, he's walking in reverse. <laughs> what? You wanna go? No. He wants to go as well. Okay, let's go. Go. Dogs. Um, couch. So, um, we were here. Okay? Now, once you got how to play that, try to play two notes. Two, four. Two, four. With harmonics on 14 and 16. And that's the very, very first application of this. You can actually solo with harmonics. Okay? And um, that's a really cool thing once you get used to it. This isn't hard to do at all. You just have to practice it. So once you can do that, uh, you can also... Um, you can also play two frets at the same time if you want. Okay? But that takes even more practice. That's actually an advanced technique because you have to play, you have to uh, put your finger on top of the fret and pick it at the same time. So you have to have your fingers at the rigid position and just 
play the strings, just strum the strings with both fingers. For example, I'm barring the A chord and I'm playing it. Okay, I apologize, I didn't mean to um, give this example right off the bat, but that sprung to mind, so uh, so there you have it, the cat's out of the bag. So, um, okay, just try simple solos on a couple of strings, frets two and four, or five and seven, so it's here. Okay, and just play a pentatonic click. Um, mind you, I've been practicing this for years, so of course, it comes naturally to me because I'm already used to this. Uh, I'm not trying to show off, I'm just giving you as many examples as I can. That's what I usually do. Um, so, practice your thumb, your third finger, and the pinky. Okay? Get used to picking it with all three. Okay? I'm not used to the third finger. I'm used to the pinky. And to the thumb. Now if you want to play it with a pick, you hold the pick between your middle finger and the thumb and use it to pick, to pick like this, while holding the finger open. Okay? <laughs> I'm doing it upside down to show you. So, for example, okay, gets a slightly stronger sound. Okay. You can also do the A chord thing. A bit harder to execute though. But if you're used to it, then by all means do it. Uh, I'm not too used to playing with a pick. You can also play a diagonal chord like F, for example. See? You just have to um, go diagonally. Okay, but again, this is advanced stuff. I'm just showing you this because I showed it to you with the fingers, so I'm using the pick. Um, but forget about it for now. I'll leave that for until you're um, fluent in artificial harmonics. Now, the second application of this is, um, by the way, soloing with artificial harmonics uh, is really, really, really cool with a distorted electric guitar you get a really, really clean sound. Steve Morse uses this a lot, and it's amazing. Um, with the right feel, and when you're really, really fluent in uh, artificial harmonics, the results are just amazing. For example. See? So um, if you play this with a distorted guitar, um, it sounds unbelievable. It sounds as if the guitar is really, really screaming. Um, and talking about screaming, that's the next application I wanted to show you before we go to chords. Um, the next application of this, and probably the most frequently used, is pinch harmonics. Now, pinch harmonics isn't used in finger style too much, or nearly at all, but it is used on the electric guitars because the distortion amplifies the harmonic. Now, um, if you want to play it on an acoustic guitar, you can do it um, like this, you know, like... Can you hear it? Now, it's a pinch harmonic because it's a high note. So it's notes that are off of the fretboard. So you have to find them. Now, it's easy and it's difficult. It's difficult if you want to get an exact precise note. It's easy if you want to get any note because um, the frets become narrower as you go up the fretboard. And if there were frets here, they would be almost, um, almost touching. Um, that's why there are no frets here because you wouldn't be able to put your finger between the steel frets. So you can just imagine the fretboard uh, continuing into the uh, sound hole, but um, it doesn't really matter what you try. See? So really, I'm playing it with my finger. I'll try to play it with a pick. 
See? Can you hear it? This is a pinch harmonic. It's not yet a pinch harmonic because it's not the pinch harmonic technique, but it's a pinch harmonic sound. Now, um, why does this happen? It happens because you have harmonics everywhere. You have harmonics on four, five, seven, nine. Okay, and as you go up the fretboard, it becomes narrower, so you have harmonics everywhere. And I bet you've heard stuff like this before. Okay, just try it. I'm playing F sharp again, two on the sixth fret. You can play the open sixth fret as well. Just play um, artificial harmonics all over the bass note. Okay, this isn't too comfortable if I'm playing it here. You, but. It's, um, it's really, really faint. You can't hear it. So on the bass note... You can hear the harmonics very, very loudly and clearly. So the pinch harmonic technique is actually using the thumb to interfere with the note. For example, I'm picking it with my forefinger. Um, let's say I'm picking um, six on the second string. I'll pick it with my forefinger and I'll use the thumb to interfere with the note. As if I'm touching the string above a steel fret, just an imagined fret, and just touching the note while I pick it. See? I'm just doing this. I'm touching with my thumb and I'm picking the string. Can you hear it? Now with a pick. With a pick, it'll sound louder because I'll be picking and touching the string at the same time. Now, no amount of zoom in can show you how it's done. You have to find your own comfort spot there and you have to um, find the exact angle that's right for pinch harmonics in order to execute it. But again, it really isn't a big deal. You just touch the string with your thumb as you pick it. See? And what happened now was that I wasn't in a correct place, so I just moved my hand slightly to the left or slightly to the right. Because again, it becomes narrower as we go along. So if you're not in an exact position, just move your hand a millimeter to the left or to the right, and most chances are you'll hit an harmonic. So, see, could you hear that? So again, okay, these are pinch harmonics. Okay, I'm Blocking the string, strumming it very strongly actually to produce a note on the acoustic guitar. If I had an uh, electric guitar in my hands and it would be uh, would have been distorted, then I wouldn't have to apply as much force because the harmonic would be amplified. But I have to apply force, um, and I use my thumb to interfere with the note. So I strum and then. I lift my thumb. Okay, first the thumb interferes and then I let the note ring. That's pinch harmonics. And now we get to the really, really cool thing. Uh, chord harmonics. Now, by chord harmonics, this is the real finger style application of it. Um, I mean playing chords and adding artificial harmonics to the chords. For example, if I'm playing a C chord with a high G note, for example, three on the E string. I can add a harmonic on three on the E string plus 12, which is 15. So I can pick it with my third finger or my pinky, whichever more comfortable for you. And right, I played the bass note with my thumb and I played a harmonic using my forefinger and my third finger. Thank you.
Okay? So if we want to add a, a harmonic to a chord, we can do something like this. Okay? Um, if we want to keep the arpeggio going, we can play the bass note with the harmonic and keep the arpeggio going. Now this takes practice, so that's your exercise. Your exercise would be to take simple chords, open position chords, and arpeggiate them and add simple harmonics. For example, C with an open E string would have the harmonic on 12. So, and you can keep on picking, okay? Or not. Now, if we play G, it's on three, so it's on 15. On A minor, it would be on the open E. On F, it would be on one, so it's on 13. <clears throat> That's a simple exercise. Now, um, another exercise would be to play the whole chord in harmonics, which is a bit, you know, challenging if you're not used to it. You just picture the chord over here, okay? If we're in the open position, you just picture the C chord over here. So, you outline it. Again, simple chords, simple arpeggios, and just adding a harmonic at the end of each. And like this. And don't just stick to open strings. You can play, for example, okay? Three on the second string inside a G chord. As I showed, uh, as you, you've seen in the F chord. You bar the first fret, so there's one on the E string or one on the B string. When you're comfortable with that, of course, start playing uh, barred chords. Okay, and find the corresponding harmonics. Five plus 12, 17. Okay, again. Just find the harmonics. Again, 17. Hey, just try it out, it's fun. And you can also harmonize the harmonic. That's the last tip um, and exercise for this lesson. For example, if you do this, okay, A minor. You can play the harmonic on 17, okay? And you can harmonize that with the third string. Okay, using your thumb and you get a harmonized harmonic hey okay, can you hear the harmonic and the next note harmonized because then you get this and also the same time. And that's how you give the illusion of being an expert guitar player by just employing one extra technique. It's not an easy technique, it's not a difficult technique, it's just a technique and like any other technique all it takes is practice and you'll get it. Now don't forget a pick. You can use the pick. Okay, you can use your fingers. You can, um, well, I showed you before. You can do, if you want. Okay, if you bar two strings, it's actually easier than a whole chord. Uh, you can uh, add it to chords. Okay, as we just discussed, you can harmonize harmonics. And you can um, strum diagonal chords with harmonics, which is probably the hardest thing I've shown you in this lesson. Um, and I've known how to do this for 18 years now. So um, again, I've had my practice. So uh, now you go have yours and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet to Lick and Riff, what are you waiting for? Click subscribe and become a member of the Lick and Riff community.
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson where I teach you how to play harp harmonics. We'll discuss that in the next lesson. Bye for now. Have fun.